A little while ago, we put out a video determining which of the CIS Navy's main warship classes was the best. Today, we'll be giving the Republic Navy the same treatment. Unlike the CIS Navy, which mixed and matched a wide variety of ship classes, the Republic Space Forces were pretty lacking in asset diversity, a major shortcoming that the Republic's successor, the Galactic Empire, completely failed to learn from. But even if the only ship the Republic used half the time was the Veneta, it did have other ships in its navy, and in this video, we'll be comparing the four most commonly used ones. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Let's start by taking a look at the smaller ships. In the Star Wars universe, any naval force worth its salt had at least a few classes of cruisers and light warships to supplement its larger destroyers. In the Republic Navy, that role was typically fulfilled by the Acclimator class assault ship. The Acclimator was principally a troop ship designed to carry 16,000 clone troopers and a host of war machines into battle, but it also fit the role of a heavy cruiser pretty neatly. It was well armoured and extremely fast for its size, it required a tiny crew of just 700, and it had the firepower to go head to head with larger enemy warships, boasting 12 heavy quad turbo lasers, 24 point defence light laser cannons, and 4 high yield torpedo tubes. The Acclimator was the foundation of the rebuilt Republic Navy, and even if it was overshadowed by the Veneta class Star Destroyer, it still managed to make an impact for the duration of the Clone Wars. Its tiny crew requirements made the Acclimator easy for the Republic to produce in large numbers without having to worry about personnel shortages, which were a critical concern in the early days of the war. The Acclimator wasn't terribly impressive on its own, but it was one of the most cost-effective vessels of all time, able to do virtually everything except carry starfighters. That said, some Acclimators were modified to act as starfighter carriers, so even that one shortcoming wasn't always true. Next up, we have the Acclimator's midget cousin, the Architens class light cruiser. The Architens was about half the size of the Acclimator, and like the Acclimator, was fast and surprisingly durable for its size. It only required 100 crew, which made it easy to field in large numbers, but unlike the Acclimator, the capabilities of the Architens were slightly less impressive. The Architens sported just four quad laser turrets, four dual turbo lasers, and four missile tubes, and the variants of the class deployed during the Clone Wars had no starfighter hangars and limited troop carrying capacity. The Architens was fast and hard to kill, but it couldn't dish out all that much damage, and it completely lacked point defense weapons, which left it vulnerable to starfighters. The Architens wasn't a bad ship, don't get us wrong, it was a good choice if you needed a speedy skirmisher that could harass separatist ships at close range. It was, however, a bit less impressive than the versatile Acclimator. Next up, we have the stars of the Republic Navy. The Star Destroyers, that is. First up, let's look at the most iconic Clone Wars era Republic ship, the Veneta class Star Destroyer. These iconic kilometer long warships were essentially heavily armed supercarriers, but Republic commanders typically used them as battleships instead, which was a terrible idea, as we'll discuss shortly. The Veneta was a pretty solid ship, its shields and armoring were possible, it could carry around 500 starfighters and support craft, it was able to carry and deploy 2,000 ground troops with accompanying vehicles, and it was decently well armed, with 8 heavy turbo lasers, 2 medium turbo lasers, 6 torpedo tubes, and 52 point defense laser cannons. However, the Veneta also had some pretty big shortcomings. It required a crew of over 7,000, its guns had some pretty huge blind spots, and its main hangar deck ran right down the forward half of the ship's dorsal spine, presenting a highly vulnerable target that not even a battle droid could miss when the hangar doors were open. It was an excellent ship when it fought from the rear lines, deploying starfighter squadrons and providing support fire from behind the cover of tougher warships, but it was rarely actually used that way. Most of the time, it fought on the front lines, leading the way with its giant vulnerability pointed right at the enemy. We suppose that it's a credit to the versatility of the Veneta class that the Republic didn't lose the war over this BS, but that massive weakness knocks the Veneta down a peg even if it was meant to be a backline ship. Fortunately for the Republic, the Veneta wasn't the only Star Destroyer in service during the Clone Wars. There was also the Victory class Star Destroyer, the cooler predecessor of the Imperial class Star Destroyer. There were two versions of this class deployed during the Clone Wars, the Victory 1 and the Victory 2 but we'll be talking about the Victory 1 here since it saw more use. 
Both versions of the Victory were the frontline brawler of a Star Destroyer that the Venator kept trying to be, and during the latter half of the Clone Wars, the Republic's smarter admirals began favoring them for frontline roles. The Victory required 5,000 crew to operate at full strength, which was less than the Venator, but still much more than the Acclimator, which wasn't all that much smaller. However, the Victory was more than worth the manpower it took to operate. Its armor was thick and its shields were extremely powerful, allowing the Victory to shrug off a positively unfair amount of enemy fire. With its 10 quad turbo lasers, 40 double turbo lasers, point defense arrays and 80 concussion missile tubes, it could dish out even more damage than it could soak up, especially against unshielded targets. The Victory had a rather small hangar capacity, with room for just a few dozen fighters, but it was powerful enough that this shortcoming rarely made the difference. Apart from that, the main weakness of the Victory was that it was slow and wasn't able to maneuver very well. This flaw was corrected in the Victory 2, though it came at the cost of the ship's concussion missile launches. Now that we've gone over all four of the Republic's main warships, it's time to decide which of these giant space triangles was the best. As with our video on the CIS Navy, we're going to be looking at the impact of each class as a whole, not just comparing stats. Stuff like increased firepower is a plus, but so are factors that make a ship easy to produce in large numbers, for example. With that out of the way, let's get into things. We're going to drop the Architons in the bottom spot. Sure, it was fast, maneuverable, cheap and tough, but its firepower was pretty negligible, especially when you compare it to the other ships that were around the same size, like the latter Nebulon B Escort Frigate, which had more than twice the firepower. The only thing that made the Arcton stand out was its speed, but speed is only useful for a warship if you've also got firepower. In third place, we have the Venator. Like the Arcton's, the Venator's firepower was lackluster for a ship of its size, and we can't excuse the giant weak spot it has right up front. The Venator was a fantastic carrier, and during the Clone Wars, it was really the only Republic ship that could field enough starfighters to be able to fend off Separatist Vulture Droid swarms. Despite that essential role, however, it was chronically misused and had a flawed design to begin with. Also, for a ship with such prominent weak spots, it required a huge crew to risk their lives just to get the vessel flying. Now, the choice between our top two ships was very close, but we're going to have to give the number two spot to our personal favorite Republic ship. The Victory was a badass ship that could dish out and take massive amounts of damage, but it had large crew requirements and a tiny Starfighter complement. Most importantly, its maneuverability was extremely poor, and since the Victory was a frontline ship, this was a big problem, since it would have been relatively easy for the Separatists to cut a Victory off from its support ships. At number one, we have the Acclimator, the MVP of the Republic Navy. There was nothing this ship couldn't do. Need armor? The Acclimator was durable enough to stand up to the Separatist core ships. Need firepower? The Acclimator could provide. Need a troop transport? No other Republic vessel comes even close to the Acclimator's capacity. Need speed? The Acclimator's as fast as a blockade runner. Need a ship with tiny requirements so you can mass produce them without having to conscript too hard? The Acclimator is one of the most cost effective ships in Star Wars as far as that goes. The only real shortcoming of the Acclimator is that the stock model had no Starfighter hangars, but these versatile assault ships could even be modified to act as dedicated carriers. As much as we hate to give our beloved Victory anything less than the number one spot, we have to hand this one to the Acclimator. But that's just our take. What's yours? Do you disagree with our rankings? If so, feel free to let us know which Republic ship you think was the best in the comments section below. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.